So, why did we go from this to this over the decades? Now, I don't mean literally, obviously. I mean, this little uh, M2 is not going to have the same performance as this vintage Axiom AX5. But it's a, it's a question many people have asked. Most recently, uh, Daniel Poe, uh, one of our uh, subscribers, in uh, what kind of technical videos would you like to see? He commented, one of his comments was, so why did speakers all of a sudden get narrower? They used to be fairly big, wide things, and, and, and they've, now everything's small and, and slim. Why did that happen? Well, I'm going to speak just from my own experience and my perspective. Uh, there's many companies still making speakers that are a more vintage or traditional uh, shape with, with a wide baffle. But I think that there's a, there's a number of reasons. You know, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, we would consider this AX5, it would be called a bookshelf speaker. Now, frankly, you need a big bookshelf. Um, but most people actually mounted them on short stands, so it was almost like a, a, a short floor stander, but they were called bookshelves. And these days, uh, we tend to refer to them as big bookshelves. And these, these types of speakers were ubiquitous, uh, particularly if you go through into the 70s and 80s, a two-way 8-inch uh, bookshelf speaker with an 8-inch woofer um, I mean, everybody, every speaker manufacturer pretty much had one. And they were very popular. And, you know, it was a not too big, not too small. You got good perf bass performance, good output. But so what happened? Why, why, did, why did we move into a world where everything was getting narrower, slimmer? So I, I personally think that there, there were a few things going on. One, I think, was driven purely by aesthetics, right? Um, as we moved from an era where, you know, the stereo system was in many times the focal point of a living space or a living room. I mean, remember all those beautiful solid wood carved consoles, you know, stereo consoles that had all the equipment built in under a hinged lid, and once it was closed, it looked like a nice piece of furniture. But again, this was the this was the focal point, and there was an expectation that you know a good quality uh, audio system was going to just take up space. So you made it look like a piece of furniture, so it kind of blended in. But as we shifted towards you know television becoming uh, more commonplace. TVs then getting bigger and bigger, and then the advent of home theater and multi-channel audio in the home, which started originally with quadraphonic, which was not, you know, a massive uh, commercial success, but then into the early days of, you know, Dolby ProLogic, and then, as we know, Dolby Digital, Atmos, DTS, all of these things where what happened? we added more and more and more speaker channels. So you went from a pair of speakers to four speakers to five speakers or five speakers and a subwoofer to seven speakers to 11 for Atmos. It just goes on and on and on. So I think that part of the reason that speakers got slimmer and less bulky was just due to that. You now have a, a living space where you've got a system set up and it isn't you know, the focal point for one thing, you've got the TV taking up probably a massive amount of space because it's probably, you know, a 65, 70 inch screen now, common. And, uh, you know, you aesthetically, you didn't want, you know, five or seven big speakers like this in the room. It, it, you may just not have space for it, but aesthetically it may not look good. So I think that's part of the reason that speaker manufacturers started to try and make the visual footprint of speakers smaller. But I also think that there's a very good technical reason too. We have to remember that when we go back into the 60s in particular, that amplifier power A was very expensive and you know there were, there were limitations. 
uh, getting a, you know, in the vacuum tube days, uh, getting a 100 watt per channel amplifier, that was a serious piece of metal. That's, I mean, a serious system. Big output transformers, big power transformers, multiple push-pull, tube configurations, all of those things. So loudspeaker manufacturers needed and were required to make highly efficient speakers. And one of the ways that you can do that is by having larger drive units. Now the penalty in many cases was base performance, but you know, a bigger driver in many cases will be more efficient. And I think that as we went through the 70s, the 80s, into the 90s, amplifier power became cheaper and cheaper. So these days we have, you know, home theater receivers, inexpensive ones, and, and 100 watts per channel, um, you know, is, 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 is sort of a, you know, a low-end spec now. I, I think that part of that was, you know, thinking that, well, now we have, we have more amplifier power, so we can go to, you know, smaller drive units, or maybe multiples of those drive units. Now, there was then a period where, you know, uh, driver technology and magnet technology that goes into drivers improved to the point where, you know, it, uh, you can make a speaker that's just as efficient with multiple drivers in a slim cabinet as you ever could with one of these single big woofer two-way systems. Um, so that, in my opinion, is why, why things got narrower. Um, there's one other thing that, you know, I think we learned a lot, uh, the speaker industry did as a whole, um, with the research that went on in the 70s, 80s, and has been continuing into measurements and into what parts of a speaker's design impact, really impacted performance. I mean, if we go back to the early, early days, slapping some drive units in a cabinet, making it a certain size that was, you know, efficient to manufacture, doing up a crossover network, predominantly listening and doing some rudimentary measurements, maybe not even in an anechoic chamber, um, got you, you know, a decent loudspeaker. But as we learned about, you know, the importance of off-axis response, so at angles to the speaker, and we learned about things like diffraction, and that's an important one. A narrower baffle will have less acoustic diffraction than a wide one. And so there are things that you can do now with those slimmer cabinets that you just couldn't do in terms of performance from those wider cabinets. Like now again, I will say yes, there are manufacturers that are still in the belief of the opposite, that wide baffles are important. And depending on their designs and their design goals, that's perfectly legitimate. I'm again, just speaking for one of the, uh, another one of the reasons that I think we've gone to slimmer speakers. So hopefully that was of interest to you. I mean, I've had that question, not just from um, Daniel, but from a number of people uh, over the years about, you know, what was this trend? And, you know, I, I hope that clears that up and thank you very much for watching as usual.